it's a massive game for so many reasons. There's probably going, we've already referenced it a couple of times, there's probably going to be some protests and demonstrations of some sort outside the stadium on the way in on the back of the Paddy Jackson and Stuart Olding rape trial and all the discussion as, as to whether or not they should be reintroduced to the Ulster squad and by extension to the Ireland squad maybe at a later date and we haven't got the review back from Ulster Rugby and the IRFU as yet but that's going to run and run. There is still a rugby match to be played yeah. and it's an a game that Ulster absolutely have to win because they have to haul Edinburgh back in. And while they do have a game in hand, they probably need to be foot perfect between now and the end of the season. Ulster and not playing Champions yeah. Cup rugby next season would be a disaster for a club whose attendance is down about 3,000 on average per, per game this season. You would imagine that will only be dented further on the back of what's happened um, off the pitch in recent months and a Challenge Cup season which in all due respect to that competition, nobody wants to be involved It's in. been a, a disastrous season for Ulster, um, on and off the field. Tonight, I think they need to get maximum points and bring themselves to 56. Then they're three behind Edinburgh, and you know they, they hope that maybe Edinburgh doable, lose then. a game or two, and it's doable. Um, but it's been a, it's been really, really poor. You think Les Kiss leaving, um, then John O'Gibbs is gone at the end of the season, and they haven't been you know, 2014 since they've been in the knockout stages of Europe. There's a lot of promises and, and uh, big statements, particularly in 2010 from their CEO, Shane Logan, saying that they were going to be, their goal was to be one of the top clubs in Europe. Um, the top of the pile in Ireland. And, and, and you know, the top Dave, I've played says. so many times up in the old Raven Hill um, and the Kingspan and the Ulster people are unbelievably passionate and there's a demand and, and maybe a similar expectation when when Munster weren't making the knockout stages in the last couple of years. Um, they've great fans and there's a feeling that they've they've been perennial underachievers. I think it's a fact. They haven't won a trophy since 2006 and in that time you think Ospreys have won the Pro 14, Pro 12 uh, four Glasgow, times, three Connacht, or four times, Glasgow, Scarlet's. Connacht, Scarlets. And you think, why haven't Ulster done that in But has the squad years? been good enough? Uh, and that's They've made a lot of mistakes, say, Kenny, isn't yeah. it? They've made yeah. a lot of mistakes um, with the recruitment. Um, there's something not right, the feel-good factor in the group. And you know, team spirit, the bond, there's something not right. That was, that, is that ma well, that, that's and a Ulster management, a big club. Some Ulster that's a management are, responsibility, really, in terms of... You they've know, got the, it, the, the problems are deep rooted it, really off the field. They've yeah, got, you, you they've go, got even it wrong. Go back to 2012, Kenny. They get to a European Cup final in brilliant style. They go down to Munster, win a quarter final. They win yeah. at the Aviva Stadium against Edinburgh in the semi final. And they sack the coach. Brian McLaughlin loses his job at the end of the season. And he's a homegrown guy. They've lost their identity a little bit. And, right. um, you know, it's just, it's all kind of unraveled there and it's not right. 